And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors Channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California. It's bright, it's early, and it's time to get into these charts. We're going to be covering the dollar. We'll take a look at NASDAQ, Bitcoin, uh, all the underlying market dynamics, and some of the news, the economic data that has been coming out. I'm going to stick with my opinion that the dollar is ruling this market, and uh, just because NVIDIA which has a trillion dollar market cap, went up 30% this morning off of some euphoria. Question is, will it carry the entire market? And as we're going into a bit of a recession, as many, many economists say, the NASDAQ top eight companies are carrying the entire stock market. The S&P 500 and the Russell 3000 if they are the ones, you know, the people in those sec, you know, companies are are buying those stocks or paying for those services, right? If their stocks go down and they experience a recession and they lay people off, then how are they going to continue to support these stocks going higher? Who knows? It's, uh, you know, one of those uh, gamble at your own risk uh, type moments with tech companies and NASDAQ. Again, not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but um, let's just quickly cover some of the economic data that came out this morning. Remember, we said today was jobless claims and GDP. So noting here, uh, jobless claims actually came in lower than expected, bullish for the dollar, continuing jobless claims, initial jobless claims. So all three majors bullish for the dollar. And that was about an hour ago. And you can see on disc Dixie on the hourly chart, we did just print a bullish engulfing candle, which does imply some continuations. However, we are at at a moment in time for Dixie, which, well, I guess the next target up is that 104.68 as we have broken through the 1618 fib. Volatility is resetting and we'll cross back up above 104.12 on the next hourly closure in 30 minutes. The 30 minute and, and you know, had, the dollar's had some nice interplay with Bitcoin the past couple of days. The dollar's simply leading the Bitcoin market as the dollar has been going up while Bitcoin has been pulling down. And you can follow that down to a 15 minute time frame, and it is very, very correlated. So markets expect a pause now called a skip in June, but odds of a 25 basis point rate increase in July have risen nearly 50% from 33% last week. We'll just check in on that really quick. The a rate hike tool. Yeah, we're at 36% now, 63% chance of a pause. According to a new poll from Gallup, stock ownership in the US is at its highest level since 2016. Well, look at NASDAQ ripping and roaring to the upside. And I guess that was the next target to the upside. Let's see where that potentially looks. That does not line up there. So we already kind of broke the 1618 off of this kind of long term consolidation on the daily time frame. Let's let's see after this consolidation breakout, which was the last one getting us up there. Let's see. And we did take out this high. I guess that is the the ultimate high to low. Yeah, that is the 618. So we broke the 0.5 heading up to the 618 is in the cards, but will the rally last? And will the debt ceiling debate cause a bit of a stumble for the market? According to JP Morgan, there is now a 25% chance that the US reaches the X date without a deal. So even JP Morgan CEO has been telling their customers, their high net worth customers to prepare for a shock there, to prepare for potentially more higher interest rates. I hope that the Republicans make it hard to make a deal. Increasing the debt has never been a solution. You know, Robin Peter to pay Paul. We've been talking about it all year long, but we'll see what happens there. And so NASDAQ target is there. SMP has not been faring as well as NASDAQ and Dow Jones, same thing. We have come down just a bit getting the silver cross to the downside volatility is increasing so is nasdaq going to lead the market now the dow has been leading the market and i do suspect a euphoria pump and they suck 61 percent of americans look it's the first time ownership has risen above 60 percent since the great financial crisis in 2000 so 
That's right. 61% of U.S. adults have reported investing money in the stock market. That's up 58% last year. And well above a decade ago, the lows of 52% in 2013 and 2016. So let's take a look at Bitcoin underlying market dynamics really quick. So leverage getting shaved off here. And as we shave off leverage, well, typically price goes down, kind of inconsequential to the all-time highs with uh, open interest there. Let's take a look at the funding rates here. Positive. So you're paying to go long at the moment. Remember, it's not 0.1%. That's when we get it. Or is it not 0.1? Let's see. Not 0.1. Yes. Not 0.1%. That's when you know a or negative not 0.1% when something is about to change. Typically, fear and greed index at a 51. So people are a bit neutral. And then the economic data that came out today, jobless claims, yeah, PCE, core PCE inflation, GDP also came in at 3.4% for Q1. Where's the year over year? Corporate profits down, GDP up. So a little bit different than the news I heard today. Generally, when GDP is going up, yeah, that's going to be bullish for the dollar showing the Fed, uh, whatever they're doing, it ain't working. So uh, let's dig into some Bitcoin price action. As I know, that is what you all came for. Are we going to get down to our box? Well, let's check out. We're looking at the daily here. Volatility is just beginning to expand and we will cross down today below 26,467. The two day did cross down. Two day volatility crossed down. You do have a golden cross right in our face right there. And it's okay to dip a little bit below there. We want to see volatility expansion here. The three day we've been talking about will cross up in three days below 26,625. So yeah, bears are going to have to get kicking in gear here if they want the market to take the next little leg down. Bears, where are you? So higher term time frames covered five day just following up on this one going to close today. And yeah, the five day is not going to cross up unless we're above 30,000 bucks. Yeah, so the daily, you know, we should be keeping an eye on this one and any kind of a daily closure really back back above again, this spike high 26, 27.6 is going to look good for a run at this trend line. And I would not say that that's completely out of the cards, but that would pretty much invalidate this move. Um, really, you know, I'd be waiting for 29.5, but front running that decision with a, you know, daily closure back above the 618 coming in at 28,300, probably good enough for me. What is the six hour printing? So six hour momentum is still down to the downside, volatility increasing back in the bearish control zone. Four hour is looking like it is going to flip up here and do we have a bullish divergence coming back from this pivot so the bounce could get a little bit of continuations here if we do confirm this as a local low how would you confirm it you need a four hour closure back above 26,500, maybe 26.6 if you're a little more conservative and that should get you a run at least up to the green 55 as we will have one two three four two three four good job bot Good job taking a little profit there, liking that, liking that. Setting it up on the 15 minute time frame. First test back in the bullish control zone, typically a sell. If we had lower volatility, I mean, the downside moves are going to be greater here. And you will notice bearish divergence, three dive variety. So I am expecting a little bit of continuations if we do close anywhere here or lower in the next five minutes. So what am I talking about? Closing below this pivot right here. And what will we have? You know, people don't like to hear about bullish and bearish divergence. I think just realized that people like to hear about triangles and head and shoulders and patterns and those types of things, but so be it. I'm going to stick with my guns there as well. We got one, two, three, four. Four drives gives you a shot to the 1618 fib. Where's that coming in at? Right here. That's where I'd be targeting a move with any kind of a closure below that pivot at 26338. I know by the time you guys are getting this, it'll be too late, but at least we can follow up and you can see if you are charting along with me in general, how that works when the price is making lower lows and the RSI is making higher lows. And these are typically the better signals from the bullish control zone. These highs all the way back here, you know, just 
just a slew of them. What does the hourly say? Hourly getting a nice tap on that green 55 and a hourly closure back below the range. We do have a bit of a range here, it looks like. I was going to call it an ascending triangle. Perhaps you could, but just looks like a range to me. You're going to have one, two, if we do confirm anywhere below here on the hourly, 15 minutes from now, which 15 minute can bleed on in. The 30 minute will confirm a bit of a top there as well, putting in a nice little sell on the 30 minute. This could be the next leg down. I'd pair that up with the dollar getting bullish, as we mentioned, probably continuations off of that hourly closure and and boom, dollar leading it to the upside and NASDAQ now giving back some of the gains. Looking for NASDAQ to come back down here at this level. That's going to be two drives, two drives shot to the 21. Eh, maybe you could call it three, but two to be fair, putting in a decent sell there as well. And PMARP, if we do start to lose this moving average on the hourly, let's see, what is this one say? You're going to have not as much divergence on the four hour and the six hour. It is not really apparent as well. So the hourly kind of leading the pack there. And that's going to be wrapping it up for me today. Let's check in on Ethereum really quick. Death cross, silver cross, sucked into the cross, likely gets spit back out i would imagine that is a pretty good death cross if you ask me pretty much hourly closure below here and probably going to get a run all the way down to this level pretty bold call one two yeah at least at the bottom side of the range at 1775 if that breaks next target down is going to be probably that 1750 critical pivot critical pivot right there i i'd say yeah that that is probably it right there actually even an hourly below there is likely going to get you a nice little drive down for mr ethereum 1757 line in the sand there checking in on gold let's see if our gold targets oh gold are you doing what we said you're gonna do and likely the move is going to get hit as the dollar is ripping to the upside and target initiated very very nice mr gold silver probably already hit our target and yes it did hopefully you're following around on our channel for that one how's oil doing oil coming down i don't really know the oil market to be frank guys but um if you look at it from a charting perspective dollar go up money go down yeah kind of losing this major pivot right here even on an hourly what about the four hour four hour is pointing down bearish divergence yeah shot back to the bottom side of the range i'd say is in the cards at 74.70 for oil these are coming into some bouncy areas which could play opposite to the dollar Japanese Chinese yen, German pound, Chinese yuan, actually the leader. We talked about this one, guys, as being a precursor to some downside on the stock market, pretty much hitting that target if we're going to get a deeper retracement. So first target is right where we're at. Second target is going to be there. So if this level breaks, I'd be looking more towards this level here. And does that line up with our FIB tool? So you can see on this bearish retracement from the ultimate high to the next major low, some decent confluence there as we ripped up to the 0.5, got rejected, lost the 786, and it was down, down, back to doggy town. Yep. That is a point for the bears there. And the you want the yen. The yen. I'm just gonna put the targets in there. If these are gonna follow suit, well, I think that was our first target based off of this retracement here. Yeah, so we'll start there. First target, second target. Yeah, volatility still increasing. This one has more to go. The pound coming off an all-time high, pretty much. Let's see, weekly target on this one. An all-time high for the year. Bearish divergence coming back from this pivot. Three drive variety. One, two, three. Shot back to the bottom side of the range for the pound. The doggy pound. All right, this one coming down, looking good. And the Euro printing similar divergence to dry variety. So this one could bounce. First target, probably gonna be here. Second target, especially if the dollar keeps ripping to the upside, guys. I'll put it here. 
And that is probably gonna line up with your, not exactly, not exactly, not 0.5618, a little bit lower, but that is generally where I would suspect prices head for the Euro if the dollar remains bullish. And with the economic data coming out in the dollar's favor and the debt ceiling crisis debate coming up, I wonder how it'll affect the dollar if they don't come to a deal. And something also to keep in the back of your melon is this, the market won't react to when the deal happens. They will react to what's in the deal. Do we even know what's in the deal? No, I don't even think we know. I don't think they'll tell us. Will the markets react when the deal happens? I think I'm going to stick with my guns on the fact that we're going to have low liquidity in June. They are going to raise the debt ceiling. They're going to sell bonds and that's going to suck money out of the private sector. Not going to be bullish for the market in the month of June. We need a real crisis to happen for the Fed to step in and do some quantitative easing. That'll goose the odds in the favor of the bulls at the moment the bears have control. That's it for today, guys. Have a blessed and highly favored day, and I'll check back in with you tomorrow. Take care.